Namaste. So tonight I want to talk about something very, very important, fundamental, and serious. So I put an under 18 age warning on this video, and I'll also warn you, this is for people in the Vivartavada. If you don't know what Vivartavada is, don't watch this video. Or if you know what Dvaitavada and Vishishta Dvaitavada are, and you're in those stages, don't watch this video. This will upset your apple cart. <laughs> this will uh, impact your understanding. Now, I know there are a lot of people out there who assume that they're qualified for Vivartavada when actually they're not. So if you're listening to this video and you start feeling bad, turn it off. It's not for you. People have gone mad over this particular knowledge. So don't say I didn't warn you. So what is this knowledge? This is a very powerful and important piece of information that I call existential aloneness. Now, the existentialists wrote about this. Jean-Paul Sartre and people like that and they called it a, a cause of what they call nausea, a sickness that won't go away, for which there is no cure. They never found an answer for it. And indeed, you cannot solve the problem of existential aloneness because it's structural. Now we talked in yesterday's video, which if you haven't seen it, you should watch it before this one. <clears throat> we discussed how pure consciousness, awareness is absolute. And because it's absolute, it's one, it's non-dual, more precisely. There's no duality in it. So there can't be a subject and an object. There can't be consciousness. But it has awareness of its own existence and the fact that it is aware. This is Brahman, Nirguna Brahman. Now, when Brahman creates the world and comes into existence, manifestation, first thing he does is create the goddess. He creates Devi. And then she creates everything else. He gives her his full powers. And you might look at this as an effort by Brahman to solve his basic aloneness, but it's not. When I had one person tell me, Brahman gets bored, so he creates the world for entertainment. <laughs> What a ridiculous idea. How can Brahman, which has no qualities, get bored? Brahman is not a person. So that can't be the answer. What is it then? Well, let's look at it from a human point of view. 
we find ourselves alone in this world. And because of the points that I discussed in yesterday's video, nothing in this world can satisfy us. We are pure awareness. We are Brahman. So nothing up to and including consciousness can satisfy us. It's just not possible. It's like trying to satisfy your stomach on a diet of water. It won't work. You can have as much water as you want. You'll still starve. because it's not the right thing. Huh? It's not the right energy. It's not the right density. It's not the right nutrition. So similarly, Brahman, Brahman can only be satisfied by Brahman. That means we can only be really satisfied by self-realization because nothing else is going to do it. Now, the reason I said people go mad over this, there was a beautiful film. I forget the name of it, unfortunately. I'll try to look it up and put it down here. About a New York detective who married his high school sweetheart and was totally happy with her his whole life. And then when he's just about to retire, she gets cancer and dies. Now, this guy was experiencing so much happiness from this relationship, right? This was his nourishment. This was motivating him. This was sustaining him in the midst of, you know, a very tough job in a very tough place. And when she died, just as he's about to retire so they can enjoy life together, it rocked his whole world. He lost it. He went crazy. And, well, it, it's irrelevant what, what he did and what happened and everything. But basically, he completely lost it. Now, this is the danger of relying on anything less than self-realization because it's all temporary. It's all impermanent. It's all flawed. It's all impure. It will cheat us. And because of this, we will suffer. So everybody is depending on this body. Everybody is depending on their mind. Everybody is depending on various relationships, family, marriage, children, and so on. What to speak of career, companies, business, and all of that. It's all going to fail. It's all going to let you down. It's going to betray you. Often at the most vulnerable point. This is my experience. And this is your experience. This is everybody's experience. So the whole of human society is simply a huge unstable house of cards built out of competition to own and enjoy, possess and, and relish things to give us the idea, the false idea, that we have conquered our aloneness, that we have conquered loneliness. And the problem with it is that none of it works. And even if it does work for a while, it's just temporary and it will go away. So even we see people making tremendous efforts to get money, power, followers, fame, everything in the world that's considered desirable. And then something goes wrong in their life and maybe they commit suicide or maybe they take shelter of drugs, or who knows? They can't handle it. And the reason they can't handle it is they have not accepted the basic fact 
of our aloneness. Who we really are, what we really are, is pure consciousness. And this pure consciousness, this awareness, this Brahman, can never be satisfied by anything else. That was the whole point of yesterday's video. I had to give that video before I could discuss this point, you understand? So, okay. <laughs> if the problem or the condition of aloneness isn't soluble, huh, cannot be solved, even by God, then what's the purpose of all of this? Why does the universe even exist? Why doesn't Brahman just be happy with his perfection and his extreme power and, and bliss and everything? And the answer is, there is one solution to the problem of aloneness. It's not really a solution, but it's the only thing we can do that really makes any sense because it's the only unconditioned approach to the problem. And that is compassion. See, compassion is unconditioned. You can have compassion in any condition of life or consciousness. You can be compassionate to anybody and everybody according to your ability and taste and so on, whatever you want to, to do to be compassionate can never stop you. It can never even slow you down from being compassionate. At the very least, even if you can't, you know, if you're in the hospital and you can't get out of bed, <laughs> you can practice metta. Metta is the practice of sending good wishes to everyone. May you be happy. May you be free from fear. May you have everything you need. May you gain the greatest knowledge. May you realize the self. May you understand the nature of life and the purpose of the universe. May you become a great saint. May you become the happiest person, the most knowledgeable person, the most fulfilled person. Like Wishes like this that you send out to people, not just anonymously off into the ether, but the real people that you come across every day in life. I'll give you a hint. If you want to experience bliss, if you want to experience happiness, uh, go in a city or town someplace and just sit. And every person that you see Wish them the best. Wish them happiness and so on. This is the practice of metta. You'll be in so much bliss, you won't know how to deal with it. <laughs> so, then, why does God create this illusory universe filled with all kinds of imaginary people? Only to experience the exercise of compassion. Because they all need help. They all need uh, relief from their suffering and so on. And what can we do? We can receive the compassion of God in the form of the Vedic teachings and other spiritual teachings and practice them and then give them to others that this is the highest compassion, and this is also the highest bliss. That's what I've been telling you guys all along. But first you have to accept that the problem or the condition of existential aloneness is absolute, it's structural. 
It's part of the way it is. It can't be changed, not even by God. So the only solution, the only thing that makes any sense then is to be compassionate and to be more compassionate and to keep on being compassionate because that's what God does. That's what Devi does. That's what Shiva does. And when we do it, we discover that this is actually the highest happiness. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. <laughs>